All right, so our next speaker uh, is also in, in the, the regime of, of, of the applied physics. And so this one uh, project uh, is along the lines of more of the effort that we've been putting at SSU and Maker. And so Eric uh, joined the Maker movement here at SSU when it very first started. So before we, we even had the new Maker space over here, back when it was just a, a little room with a couple printers in it. And so uh, that's where I really got to know Eric. Uh, uh, so I was impressed with the, Eric's ability to really focus. And then he, he doesn't always communicate what's going on in his head. There's a lot of things going on in there, right? <laughs> and so when I started to pro, when I started to find out well, how much stuff was going in there, I got to really start to see there's a lot more to, 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 to Eric than you first guess. And then so uh, over the last how many years has it been? First one, two years? It's about two, two and a half. Two and a half years. Uh, I've worked very closely with him. He, he, uh, he uh, worked with, with me also, other than the with the maker movement here on campus, he, and he helped as a peer facilitator for that class with me. He also uh, worked with uh, the Corette funds uh, to do research on that as well. And so he has a particular design uh, and a prototype he'd like to talk today that it relied on all of his his bag of tricks that he's developed here in the physics department and then also it opened up a door to the new areas that he had to explore and so sure, thank you all right uh, so today yeah, I'd like to talk about the project that I created over the semester uh, I've been calling it adaptive virtual reality uh, it's a feedback device for virtual reality systems <coughs> So just a brief overview of what virtual reality is, uh, in case you might not know. Uh, virtual reality is kind of a new technology that allows a user to interact um, firsthand with a, a computer-generated 3D environment. Uh, usually it's used for games and things like that, uh, though it does have a lot of uh, applications for things like education as well. Um, it's, like I said, it's very modern. Uh, modern VR systems are extremely precise and actually really nice to use. They're a lot nicer than previous generation systems. Uh, but what, I'm created, what I created for today is what's called a haptic device. A uh, haptic device is a feedback device that gives you tactile feedback uh, depending on what you do in, in say, a virtual reality game. Um, a good example of a, of a haptic device in general would be like the buzzer on your phone. Uh, if you're, you know, you get a call or you do something on your phone, and then it starts buzzing or buzzes at you, that's a, that's a haptic feedback, uh, physical feedback, tata feedback, um, for some action that happened on your phone. Um, this haptic feedback in general has huge applications for virtual reality because it really increases how, um, like, it increases the immersion of the user within the virtual space. Uh, it gives you more, it engages more of your senses than just your eyes and your ears. You're able to also involve senses such as touch. Um, there are several VR haptic devices that are being that are in development right now. Uh, just a few examples of some that I was researching. Uh, in general, haptic devices for VR tend to be um, big, bulky, and expensive. Uh, so my big goals for this project were to make it as light and as low cost as possible to try to keep it accessible for the, the majority of people, the majority of people who would be using VR. So what my device does is it's a haptic device that simulates um, weight. So if you were to go pick up, if you were in a virtual space and you were to interact with an object, uh, my device simulates the weight of the object such that if you were to pick up a heavier object, you would be able to feel, it would feel heavier than uh, say some, a lighter object. Um, but the problem with that is, is I can't actually change the mass of the controller as you're using it. The way I got around that is I didn't change the mass, but I changed the moment of inertia of the controller. And I'm just kind of a general overview of moment of inertia. It's in essence kind of something with a higher moment of inertia is harder to rotate. So essentially when you have an object that's harder to rotate, it feels like it's heavier than an object that's easier to rotate. So essentially my device is able to go from a low moment of, moment of inertia, which feels, which is easy to rotate and feels light, to a high moment of inertia that is harder to rotate and feels heavy. Um, 
just a quick calculation I did. Uh, it goes from about 1.2 times 10 to the negative third to 3.7 times 10 to the negative third kilograms meter squared um, for a moment of inertia. It's not, this is the theoretical value just because the design is not perfect. It is probably about less than this. Uh, theoretically, it would be up to a three times increase in moment of inertia where it's really probably closer to about two. Uh, but that hopefully will be improved in later designs. Uh, my proof of concept was just very simple, uh, just to test and make sure this would work. Uh, I had a very simple, just, just a system with just a few components. I had the rails, which, were, which are stationary components. And then I have the weight, which rides on the rails, and the, rate, the weight is what moves and changes the moment of inertia. And then this knob on top is actually connected to a screwdriver that runs through the length of the device, which connects to the weight and allows it to move. So when you rotate the knob on top, the weight moves up and down accordingly. Um, it worked. The point of rotation on this device was just about where it's indicated here and here. Um, and when you rotate it about that axis, you have this configuration where the weight is fully is as close as it can get to the point of rotation. Uh, at this location, it, the object was very easy to, easy to rotate and felt very light. Uh, once you move the weight down towards the bottom, the object was harder to rotate and felt very heavy. Uh, then we move on to my actual prototype. Uh, works on very similar principle to the proof of concept, but obviously much more is going on. Um, you still have the weight, the screwdrive, and the rails, though I did change the position of the weight was external on my proof of concept, uh, and I changed it to be internally held on this prototype, uh, just to make it simpler. Uh, having the weight mounted externally while having the drive mounted internally increased the complexity to a degree that I didn't want, so I tried to make it as simple as possible. Um, I changed the drive a lot. Uh, I modified the threads on it so that it was a lot more durable and also had a lot higher pitch. Um, and that makes it so that the device, that the weight can transfer between states more quickly and not have as much transition time. So you don't have as much lag, say, between picking an object up as, because it takes time, when, if you were to pick up an object in the virtual space, it would take time to transition to the appropriate state. Uh, and if you can make that transition faster, it's less noticeable to the user. Uh, other than that, ah, so the final prototype, the, the proof of concept really only had two positions, minimum and maximum. Uh, however, this prototype has four positions. It has a minimum and a maximum, but also two in between. Uh, this gives you more resolution and also more options when you, if you want to simulate different weights. So you don't have to go straight from the lightest to the heaviest. You can have in between, uh, you can have yeah, states in between, they give you more, more resolution. Um, I also designed the unit to be very modular. Uh, you can, uh, for this prototype, like I said, I selected four states. However, it would be very simple to increase or decrease the number of states depending on what you needed, what was necessary for the situation. And it would actually not require that much modification. You would have to modify this, the rails a little bit and add more sensors, but other than that, there wouldn't be much involved. Uh, the electronics, the main drive component and the electronics associated with this device are a DC motor. I have a DC motor attached to a reduction gearbox that's used to drive the main screwdrive. Uh, that DC motor is controlled by an Arduino microcontroller. Uh, an Arduino, or microcontroller in general, but specifically the Arduinos, are almost like um, little programmable computers in a sense. Um, you can go in and program to do specifically what you want to do. Uh, they integrate very well with sensors and also control devices. Uh, so I've programmed this one specifically to run this specific device. And it runs just off of a bat this, this battery runs the entire device. Um, yeah, also, the, not only is the design of the actual <coughs> case, the physical design of, the, of this device is modular, but also the code is modular. I designed so that you could E fairly easily change the code and either, again, add or subtract positions to either increase or decrease your resolution if required or desired. Essentially, yeah, essentially how this one runs is you have a minimum and maximum position. Uh, when you activate it, it first goes through a homing procedure and goes up to the home and goes to the minimum position as a home. And then once it reaches that position, the microcontroller analyzes what the input is and determines if it needs to make a change to the position of the weight. And if it does, it does so. But if it's at the lowest, then it doesn't. And then it just continuously monitors the input. Right now, my input is uh, manual control. 
and it just continuously monitors the state of that input to determine if the location of the weight needs to be changed. My conclusion, I'm, the first part type was a success. Was a success. Um, I'm very happy with how it turned out. I, uh, yeah, I, I, I was, it took a while and it took a lot of work, but I'm, I'm happy with how it came out. Um, I definitely have some next steps. This is the first prototype. Uh, I hope to be able to continue with this and move to next, uh, my next steps. Uh, future designs will definitely may be made smaller and lighter. Uh, the lighter I make, the lighter I make everything but the weight, the more effective the whole thing will be. So if I decrease the stationary mass of the uh, of my device while either w while keeping the the non-stationary weight uh, about the same, the effectiveness of the device will increase. Um, yeah, and then obviously the manual control will be replaced by control by VR software. Uh, I didn't for just just for the purpose of the prototype, I had it be manually controlled. But of course, when you want it to integrate with VR software, you'll have it be controlled by the software itself. Um, also possibly looking into commercializing this, this design if I can get it um, once it gets refined some more, because I do, I do really believe it has good potential on the market. Um, that's the end of my slides, but I want to give you a quick demonstration of, and show you how this works inside. So when it's fully assembled, there is a cover over, over this, over the weight and the internal components. Um, right now I have that removed just so I can demonstrate how the weights work. Okay, so right now you're at the lightest position, the lowest moment of inertia. You move to the next position. So that's position number two, and number three, and number four, which is the heaviest. And then you can move from there and go back up through the stages. And then you can rest that. Do you want that held up? Can I, can I just offer be a stand for you here so other people can see? <laughs> yeah, maybe I want to look at it. It's more, it's more impactful if you can um, sort of. Can, can you put you it all the way up and, and let me. Sure, sure. Yeah, okay. And then I'll move to the maximum. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Feels stiff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, also I can demonstrate um, how it homes as well. So what's nice about this, I wanted to make sure, because um, a lot of the time, I wanted to make sure that not only the case was as ro robust as possible, but the electronics were very robust. So I made it a point to, you know, if you're if you're playing games, I know not not all the time, or almost none of the time. If you're done with the controller, you don't you know take out the manual and say, okay, this is the exact shutdown procedure. No, you usually just turn it off or take out the batteries or whatever. So I wanted to make sure that this device, you can just unplug the battery and then plug it back in, and then it's good to go. It resets. So it's I try to make it as not only as modular as possible, but also as robust as possible from a usability standpoint. And I hope to retain that and definitely retain that for the designs and also improve, improve on that and for the designs if possible. And that's pretty much it. Thank you.